fractor. This was surprisingly decent. I was recently approached by the people at the Quantum Astrophysicists Guild. Jesus Christ, say that ten times. A game developer and publishing partner that helps independent developers bring their games to the public whether it's on PC or consoles. Now, this is not a sponsored or paid review. However, they did gift me some codes and they wanted me to take a look at a couple games. But I wanted to cover this one ASAP considering it recently released on the Switch and I could tell that this was going to be a quick game so I knew I could get this out reasonably fast. So, Fractor is the name of the game here and as for the story, let's see what their Steam bio has to say. Fractor is an emotive, isometric puzzle adventure game set in a mysterious labyrinth of glowing black architecture. The game follows a veiled young hero who has set out on a perilous quest to dispel the darkness within. Players must explore this world of shadows, discovering secrets hidden in the dark and outsmart ominous creatures while solving each meticulously designed puzzle, using their only force against darkness, light. Dramatic landscapes in shades of grey, an eerie ambient soundtrack, and a poetic self-reflective narrative await you on this emotive journey restoring light to a darkened world. Now if anyone remembers what I said last time in my previous review, I'm not a big fan of puzzlers. I also get stuck quite easily. I recently finished streaming my first ever playthrough of Resident Evil 1 on Twitch. Comment if you want the edited Let's Play on YouTube. And I had to either guess or look up a couple puzzles because I got lost near the end. This game though, it felt just right. I didn't feel like it was holding my hand and I didn't get too stumped when it came to completing each level. It does have a little hint system that tried to nudge me in the right direction, but it was vague and tended to fit the story when your little spirit ball guide would talk to you. Getting back to the story for a second, I don't have much to say about it. It seems to be what helps lure you into the game and motivates you forward. From what I took from it, you are pulled into this world and there is a conflict between light and dark. The souls of light, I think they're called fractures, but for the purposes of this review, I'ma call them souls which look an awful lot like you, are scattered across the seven levels and you are tasked with getting to the end. Yes, there's only seven levels, so don't expect a big old RPG experience here. It took me about three hours or so to complete it 100% and I was taking my time. Now I'm usually bad at puzzlers, as you know. Take that for what you will because an expert could potentially blaze through this. The unfortunate thing is that I don't think there's much replayability here. Sure, if you missed a few souls, you can always go back and collect them. I'm not sure if you can actually complete the game with skipping some, but it did look like it was giving me the opportunity to do so. But that still shouldn't take you long. You could come up with your own challenge, like not killing any of the Dark Souls. Mm, funny joke. The AI is also pretty stupid, by the way. I mean, they will walk into any obvious trap you set for them. You may just want to do some levels again, but there's only seven. This is something you should walk into, acknowledging that you will probably complete it once and never touch it again, unless you want to share it with a friend. The experience itself, I think, is what the game's main purpose is, despite it being a short one. There's no voice acting, I know, poor me, but the sound and art design has this nice, basic, calming vibe to it. When I look at it, especially the main character, I get this really strong traveler vibe from the Journey game. The way the environment tries to pull you in and keep you calm with its soundtrack reminds me of Flower, and its dark color palette reminds me of other good short games like Inside. Now I'm not sure if there's an alternative ending if you possibly complete the game without all Souls of Light, but I myself completed it once with all of them, and what happens at the end is in fact what I like to call short and sweet. If you don't want minor spoilers, feel free to skip to this time to avoid seeing some stuff that happens right at the end of the game. We good? Okay, we good. If you collect every last soul, you become a god and get to destroy every single one of these bastards, smashing through them like the tendrils of the divine, all-knowing, all-seeing giant spaghetti monster! And that's it, basically, avoiding what the game tells you at the end. It's a short and sweet experience, but personally I enjoyed sinking my time into it as it didn't outstay its welcome for me. For those who love puzzlers, they may have been yearning for a bit more than this, but the game itself isn't all that expensive on Steam or Switch. 
It's about 10 Australian dollars, so if you're in America, it's likely cheaper. Even more so if you catch it on a sale. Overall, it's not my style of game, yet it entertained me for the time I spent with it. I don't think it's a bad game, and I don't think it's an amazing game. To me, it successfully earns the title of a solidly decent puzzler game that fans of the genre should play if they want to have a nice bite-sized experience where they can chill out when solving puzzles and battling the darkness. This is going to get my seal of approval, but if you don't like playing games of this genre, or games like Flower, Journey, Inside, etc, maybe avoid this one, or pick it up on a sale at least. Enjoy the rest of the month! Happy Halloween! And may the path of light lead your soul to greater heights. Thanks for watching. A big thank you to all my lovely patrons. If you want to join them, links in the description. Feel free to use my Green Man Gaming affiliate link to potentially find you some good deals and help me out with a bit of a kickback with no extra charge to you. My Twitch streams are still on every Friday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sydney Australian time. Mostly. And the Discord gaming sessions are still every Saturday, Sunday, 10 a.m. Sydney Australian time. Links to all this in the description. Oh, follow me on Twitter and join the Discord to get notifications about all this stuff too. Did I mention I have a watch discount code? Yeah, you know, that prehistoric thing that maybe 5% of you still use and care about. Links are all there if you want to take a looky, because you better hurry. This unnecessary device is not selling fast anytime soon. <laughs> you become a god and get to destroy every single one of these bastards. Smashing through them like the tendrils of the divine, all-knowing, all-seeing giant spaghetti monster. <laughs>